You guys are excited. I mean, I can tell. Forrest is excited. Peter's excited. It's Always. my favorite game. We're playing the extinct animal game again. It's great. It's so good. So, so Forrest, good. tell us how the game works. Yeah. So the extinct animal game, my favorite game that we do as it's a weekly, is Patrick, you have a list of extinct animals that you've researched, yes. relatively yes. recent ones, and you lay it out to myself, the broologist, and Retep, the layman. And um, you ask us, could it still be alive? Could it still be hiding out there somewhere? Why, if so? Where, if so? And we, uh, we discuss it. We debate it. It's yep. topical. Yeah, it's exactly. wonderful. Hey, it happens all the time. We discover these things all the time. Me and you, Forrest, we discover these things all the time. We've done it. We. I've never a bunch. watched a single yeah. episode. All right. You've so here's literally never watched it. Bunch of cool animals. I want to get Forrest's take and Peter's everyman yep. take. First yep. one. Okay. Really cool looking bird. Uh, lived for about 20 to 30 years. Very, very recently deemed extinct. The hmm. Spix is macaw. The Spix macaw. Which, Peter, before you weigh in, is the mm-hmm. blue parrot from the movie Rio. I'm not sure if you've seen the Disney or Pixar movie Rio. It's about a blue parrot. Yeah. That's the Spix yeah. macaw. Very good. So what do, you, good. what do you think, Peter? What do you think? You think this bird has a, has a chance? Yeah. I mean, this, there's, this is definitely still in existence. They just can't find it. It's small. It's in trees. I mean, they're it not going they're not gonna fucking find this thing. They have to look very hard to find this thing. And by they, I mean you two. Get a ladder and find one. <laughs> I like that. All right, close. That's fantastic. Close, close. <laughs> um, the Spix McCall is indeed still, ex- still extant. So here's the story, mm. right? Spix McCall, very good, Ritev, very good. Is, has been extinct in the wild for quite some time, 15, 20 years, I forget. But extinct in the wild is the key term. So there's oh. this eccentric, wild German, wild, uh, German like billionaire. <laughs> I'm forgetting yeah. his name. I've actually exchanged dozens of emails with him, uh, who runs an organization called ACT, which is this parrot organization. And he, mm-hmm. with his own money, collected all of the remaining Spix macaws in Germany. So he got, like, one from some rich Arab sheik, one from some fat Texan, like, one from this guy in Australia, like, all over the world, and brought them all together in Germany, right, oh, and started yeah. breeding them. And, and this, this Hans, I think was his name, I can't remember, this crazy Good German guess. dude, this old German dude, super Hans. nice guy. Yeah, no, he's super cool. <laughs> he's, he's, wild. he's, like, crazy. He's nuts, but he's super cool. He brought all these birds together and started breeding them, and he got their numbers up from, like, six or eight, I forget how many he collected, to where he's at now, which I believe is around 30. And I was wow. actually in conversations with Hans and his assistant and the whole group because ACT, the parrot organization, actually ha- is like 90% of the way to finishing building a habitat in northern Brazil where the Spix macaw is from to bring the birds from Germany to there where they're going to like establish them and then they're going to start releasing them pairs at a time, two here, two there, et cetera, et cetera, back into their habitat. And that's going to start this year in two months. It's going to start in March wow. 2021. This was on deck for Extinct or Alive Season 3. We were going to broaden out and start looking at, you know, like reintroductions of extinct species. We talked about the quagga the last time we played this game. That was on the Extinct three, Season 3 deck. And um, this was one of them because this animal is extant. It's not extinct. It, it's just mm-hmm. extinct in the wild. So it still exists or st- did still exist in private rich guy collections around the world. And because they live for so long, this crazy right. crazy German guy was like, let's just bring them all together and make them have some babies. And, uh, and now he's doing it, and it's fantastic. <laughs> it's it's yeah, not too right. different than what they're doing in the Galapagos with the, tort- uh, the uh, tortoise conservancy there, yep. where they, they take them and they breed them and they've... I mean, what was it, like over 3,000 that they've yeah, released it was like 15, back into 000. the wild? Yeah, it was oh, a wow. huge number. Shit. Yeah, yeah, it was like 15,000 that they've re-released oh, into God. the wild that they've bred. And same thing. So basically this, this crazy German dude has single-handedly saved the species. And there's like controversial stuff that he's done because he's like paying, you know, huge amounts of money for them. And some people hate him and some people love him. I think he's fantastic. Anybody that pays yeah. his own money to bring all these birds together and get them back into the wild is, is a winner in my book. So, yeah, I, Spix McCaw, definitely still alive. As of March this year, they'll actually be back in the northern Brazil. Love that. That's great. I love to hear when humans actually do some good. That's right. Hey, change. hey next one. we do a lot of good. Let's not be shitty about humans in 2021. Here's the next one. Okay. This was something Forrest and I spent a 
whole shit fucking load of time researching night. Uh, okay. we were I already dead... know what animal it's going to be. <laughs> yeah. We were dead you guys set are on experts and I'm oh, supposed to <laughs> You're the everyman, bro. Yeah, okay, that's why okay. you got the McConaughey cut. Right, You're relax, looking good. Relax, Papa yeah. PP. Looks Damn. like you used Pert Plus today. <laughs> Um, you're wearing your colored like contacts. I've seen your eyes. They're not that blue. Dude, are you out of your mind? <laughs> they, I look like a fucking angel. Yeah, yeah you, do. you really do. It's annoying. Um, <laughs> all right. So we were going to go, Ratep, we were going to go search for this animal. We were going to go okay. to the Pyrenees Mountains in yep, Europe. Knew it. Knew it. And the person that writes the checks for the shows was convinced that we just wanted a vacation to Europe <laughs> and that we were going to spend most of our time drinking... And eating tapas. Was he wrong? <laughs> no. <laughs> he, he was Not wildly wrong because time. we never do that shit. We, yeah, we totally. usually are in dingy shitholes doing <laughs> whippets so with guides that are going to show us something. <laughs> All so right. true. The Pyrenees Ibex. The Pyrenean Ibex. Super fucking cool animal. Yep. Uh, look at that oh. thing. Look yep. at yeah. that thing. Uh, mm -hmm. It was deemed mm -hmm. extinct officially in 2000. They tried to do a mm -hmm. cloning project with some DNA. In 2003, <laughs> yeah. uh, a, a Pyrenees Ibex was born, but she died seven minutes later mm -hmm. due to a mm -hmm. lung defect. Uh, let's have Forrest go first this time. Tell us a little bit about this creature and what you Sure. Think. Yeah, beautiful mountain goat species occurred up in the Pyrenees Mountains, um, which I think is, what is it, border of Portugal and Spain? I, I'm kind of like blanking yeah, exactly. now. Yeah, yeah, so Portugal and Spain, high up. So like many of the mountain goat species, you can see in the background of this image, lived on these insane vertical rock faces. So in yeah. an area that people can't get to, like human beings, you know, unless you're in full climbing gear, could not really be where these animals were. So there, as Patrick said, we put in a bunch of time and effort and helicopter research, climbing gear research, etc., to launch this mountainous expedition to the very tip top of the Pyrenees, I or Py Pyrenees Mountains to look for the ibex, you know, with all climbing gear. And the reason yeah. that we were going to launch this expedition, like with everything we do on Extinct or Live, we wouldn't do it if we didn't think it was there. So the reason that we were going to launch this expedition is because a bunch of, I want to say Italian, but there's some group of hunters, Portuguese, Italian, Spanish, I can't remember, hunters kept. Who, who were like kind of the most hardcore badass group of hunters that went into this region and were hunting other things, kept reporting seeing them. And it's like, well, wait a minute. Nobody else is going up there, like to the heights where these animals were, except this group of hunters. Nobody else mm -hmm. is hanging out up there for like three weeks at a time, two weeks at a time. And they would report seeing mountain goats like across the valley skirting along, you know, the mountain's edge and stuff. And we're like, well, that could be the Pyrenees Ibex. You know, why? What's to say it isn't? I mean, I don't think anyone's done a proper survey. And so... As, as Patrick said, we believed that the animal was there. We were planning on launching this climbing expedition. Patrick and I were even training. We were hitting climbing gyms and everything else, yeah. getting real ready to go search for this bad boy, and uh, never happened, unfortunately. So I believe in very small populations, it could still be there. Yeah. Ritek, what do you think? Um, I'm going to have to just disagree 100%. You've got... You've got <laughs> gangs of roving hunters in these mountains looking to kill anything they can find they've definitely killed all of these off they're dead uh you would easily be able to see their horns from anywhere i could probably see them from here uh so makes my take on up. it is that these guys are long gone hopefully they can create one from the dna in okay. the future all right okay. well the so we got one and one the biologist who's studied it a lot says yes the every man who thinks he could see the horns from his condo in LA says no <laughs> you mean the biologist who wanted to go have tapas and cocktails <laughs> who and doesn't want to do that, that yeah come so on good. that's not don't hold that against us that's not fair <laughs> Sounds really good all right, <laughs> all right here's the next one very recent very cool animal uh deemed extinct well the last known one died in 2002 one was spotted in 2007 though ID'd as the animal but not taken off the extinction list because they said that a uh, – the quote was that a – only one or a few animals, particularly of an advanced age, is not enough to save a functionally uh. extinct species from true extinction. This is the Baiji. That's right. Also, uh, also known as the Chinese river dolphin or the Yangtze oh. dolphin. Uh, mm -hmm. So forest again – you go first this well, time. Well, this is, this is the one that you guys were going to try and find in China, but China wouldn't let you in because 
Is it? Is it? Of course. That's we tried, correct. We tried. That's correct. Twice. Yeah. We tried twice, and no pollution here. Everybody happy. Um, was the, you know, so right. I, I remember this. Um, yes. From the podcast. So as yeah. as Patrick just pointed out, they lived in the Yangtze River, which flows right through Shanghai, China, right, like right downtown China, which has, oh, wow. you know, it's, it, yeah. or downtown China, downtown Shanghai. It's one of like you know the biggest <laughs> populous cities in the world, and mm-hmm. there was this kid, like he was like a twenty three year old self proclaimed naturalist, right, and he had photos of the back of a baji photos that we got i think exclusively before they went out wide i can't really remember anymore but we had these photos in hand and mm. you know like i i one of my emphasis in biology is marine and i looked at it and went that's a dolphin you know that's not something else that's a dolphin right. there's only one kind of dolphin that exists in this river and this guy was basically like three miles outside of shanghai he wasn't like way up in the headwaters because this yangtze river is a huge river you know, it's like, think, think like bigger than the Colorado. I mean, massive river. And he was like three miles outside of Shanghai, like up river. And I was like, well, wait a minute. If you're getting pictures of one of these three miles outside of Shanghai, if we maybe go 35 miles outside of Shanghai, I think we might get lucky. And we have technology that, I mean, China has all the technology, but that you as, as like small um, biologists with limited budgets in, in uh, China don't have. Like, we're going to bring a thermal drone we know these animals have to come up for air. Like, this is kind of a slam dunk. Like, all we have to do is fly a grid up and down this this river with a thermal drone that picks up marine mammals, and anything that pings is going to be the animal we're looking for. Like, this is this is like we're, we're, we're stepping up to bat a home run here. This could be huge. <laughs> so we start yeah. putting in, I don't mean to dog like this. My obvious answer is I think there's at least was still a couple a few years ago. Could still be one or two now. They're definitely on their way down. But anyway, the the story goes like this. You know, we were I was super confident, like I am saying this to you now, in our methodology and approach. We had this kid who had a picture of one. I mean, it was like all lined up. We're like, great, let's go to China. Let's find the Baji. And, uh, you know, we start putting in our paperwork. China's a communist country. And this was my bad because they like asked us for a a letter of like intent and proposal and like what the show is going to look like. Very structured, very rigorous. And, I, you know, I wrote this whole scientific piece of paper that's like, this is what it's going to be. This is what we're doing. And I opened the, the letter, and I, I regret this ever since, by saying, due to pollution, the Baji River dolphin is, is you know, in, in danger. Uh, due to pollution and damming, the Baji River dolphin is, is right. in danger of extinction, blah, 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 blah. And they wrote back, no, extinct, uh, no pollution here. They didn't write everybody happy. I added that part. But, oh, my uh, God, they really wrote that? Oh, yeah. That, that They're like, part? you kind of denied no pollution here. And I'm like, wow, weird. There's no pollution in China. That's amazing. Wow. And the Yangtze That's River is, is interesting yeah. because we, we were looking, we were doing a bunch of cool shit. We were like cruising around on Google Earth. Um, there's this cool thing where you can get like this joystick. And it, uh-huh. if you get Google Earth Pro, it allows you to essentially almost fly a helicopter around anywhere mm-hmm. in the world. It's really oh, wow. fucking That's cool. Really yeah. cool. But the Yangtze River is fascinating because like, in the areas that go through the cities, the river is brown. It looks like Willy Wonka's uh, chocolate milk river. Yeah. And then in the in the areas that are not in the cities, it's cl- it's clear. Yeah. Or it's more crazy. clear. You know, you, yeah. the water looks good. So the, the right. plan was to go there to some of those clear areas, which you would think that's where these dolphins intelligent, would be. sentient beings had moved to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Forrest, your definitive answer: yes or no. Still around in very limited numbers. Very, very limited. Five, ten at most kind of thing. Do you know what... What's your first language, Forrest? Is it English? Because I said yes or no. Still around. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. What Rude. a mean guy. Rude. <laughs> Ritap, your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know how I feel about China and the pandemic and everything. I mean, I'm not getting political, but that you... First of all... You wait, are, but please continue. I, I, I got, you are. I, who, who declared it extinct to begin with? Like, was it a consortium of the, scientists It's literally the exact same guy that said no pollution here. I'm just <laughs> kidding. So I don't know. You really can't trust anything that comes out of there because as evident, even by the letter they sent back to you, it, it's like you, you never know. So, yeah. of course, they've done no... I mean, they don't know. So, yeah, I think it's still there. Maybe, maybe thousands of them. Wow, I will say more, like that R- Ratep and I's mutual acquaintance slash friend, the one who got bit by the, the uh, snake in mm-hmm. Costa Rica, the fur de lance. Mm-hmm. he oh, yeah. about five or six years ago had a beat on a guy who had basically had a backyard zoo that had a, had a baiji in it. 
Um, really? And he oh. was yeah, and he was trying to launch uh, an expedition to go and basically do like this military takeover and steal it and get it into a van and do this Phenomenal. whole thing. Um, I was trying to. We were trying to figure out if there was a way to film it. <laughs> Obviously, yeah, that's I'm what sure. I do. Um, <laughs> pros. But he supposedly knew that this guy had one in a zoo. This was ah, this might be going back to like 2011. So it was a while still, back. Still, I mean, that's but, still huge. You know, I'm, yeah. I wish you guys could have figured that out. That would have been I huge. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right, last one. Last yep. one for this this version. Yep. I'm torn between two. Uh, all right, I want to do this one. Out let's, with it. All right, okay. let's go. So. Birding, right? It's a huge thing it's in America. Uh, my dad had bird books. He loved looking at birds, looking through binoculars to try and find interesting birds. It's a huge thing, man. When I went to New Zealand, we took this ferry from the North Island to the South Island. The entire ferry was birders. <laughs> it was this club from America, and they all had these crazy lenses just looking to spot an albatross because they all yep. wanted to see an albatross. Oh, yeah. Mm. It's a big, big thing. It's huge. The whole grail of American birds is an extinct bird that was technically deemed extinct in the 1920s, although they almost took it off the list because of a sighting in 2004 in Arkansas. Forrest and I spent a lot of time trudging through swamps that were about just right about waist high. Mm -hmm. Spent about two weeks in Louisiana looking for the ivory-billed woodpecker. Retep, why don't you lead with this? Yeah, I've seen one of these. I, I was in the Redwoods, <laughs> and I saw this woodpecker, so uh, it exists. No, for real, though, it's been gone since 1920, and there's only been one sighting. No, now, no, there's the been thing. a lot of sightings. Here's the thing, Rotep, it yeah. was always rare. So yep. even before oh. the and cypress swamps elusive. were destroyed, yeah, it was okay. a very rare woodpecker, and it's much larger than a typical uh, woodpecker, right, Forrest? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. correct. Yeah. So. It's very closely related to an animal that looks similar called a pileated woodpecker. And if Oh, if yeah, I, that's what I saw. Dude, sure. I can't even tell you. 10,000, 20,000 different messages I got after our Extinct Your Live episode aired. Hey, y'all, you, you didn't find the rat woodpecker. Here's a picture. And it's a picture of a pileated woodpecker. And I'm like, I went through this like 700 times on the episode, the difference between a pileated and an ivory build. Anyway, um, so yeah, everybody thinks they've seen one, but, and there are there is a lookalike, but that lookalike, much smaller. Pileated is like half the size. This ivory build woodpecker yeah. is like a three foot tall woodpecker. And, and pileated are big. They're big, yeah, they're, yeah. they're, they're massive. Yeah, that, that was actually what I saw in the Redwoods because there, I remember now there was a sign. They tell you what you're seeing, like, mm -hmm. you know, the stuff you'll see. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it was that, yeah, now that yeah. you jogged my memory. Mm -hmm. Super cool bird, and one of the people that we worked with, a uh, guy named Michael Collins. And right now, here's the thing. You're like, oh, you know, we, we got a sighting, right? They say that on the, book, the Bigfoot Boogeyman Hunter shows, right? Oh, well, they had a, Jim Bob had a sighting. That's fine. Jim Bob hasn't he drank anything that wasn't corn wine in 35 years, okay? We had this guy named Michael Collins on our shoot with us who was a mathematician from NASA, OK, uh -oh. that is a credible fucking dude. Right. Like this mm -hmm. is not a lunatic. I mean, amazing dude. Super cool. Awesome to hang out with. Literally a like rocket scientist, a mathematician from he, NASA. He purposely yeah. got a transfer to the NASA office that was in Louisiana. Right. So that on his off time, he could look, look for, for the Ivory Bill Woodpecker. Oh, wow. And, and by the way, had... last thing I'm going to say is he also had to have surgery for cancer. Oh, and yeah. he put it off so he could come help Forrest for a us. few days and delayed his surgery. Yeah, this his like life-saving surgery. Man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah He's obsessed crazy. with it. But here's what's so awesome, right? So, Michael, again, mathematician from NASA, like the best America has to offer in the world of, like, academia and science. He went out, f chased these birds around for, like, 25 years. I mean, like, insane, insane amount of times. And got this video he was high up in a tree and he got this video of this bird flying under him and he's like i've seen this thing three times it's it's the ivory-billed woodpecker but as a mathematician what he did is he went and used mathematical models and equations and distances and fucking lines and all these things that i don't even remotely understand and looked at the flight path of the bird the wing flaps per meter or what the fuck ever the shadow distance off the water all the shit that he showed us that patrick and i were like we can't put this in the show like we're not all fucking <laughs> right. geniuses like no one understands right. this but um 
it was it was insane because he had this all down to a literal scientific equation um, mm-hmm. and, and had like a, a model of a pileated and a life-size model of um, an ivory build up on the stick where he spotted it. everything you can imagine all done with like numbers lines and math like crystal clear in his mind super confusing unless you're like a fucking algebra professor and he was like that is an ivory build woodpecker he's like i know the video is hard to see because the bird's flying but based on the wing flaps per second the weight of the bird the distance it can travel blah 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 blah. he had all these like mathematical statistics where he's like statistically speaking 99.98 percent or whatever this is an ivory build woodpecker like there's nothing nothing that can dispute this based on the size the morphology blah, blah blah and it was so fucking cool to see all of this mathematical science applied to identifying an animal that I could never think of, right? I'd be like, yep, saw the bird, it flew by, you know, you don't believe right. me, that's fair. He's like, well, you don't believe me, here's the math, you know, and it's like, holy sure. shit, dude, that's wild. So yeah, I yeah. actually, I actually, again, would never launch an expedition for an animal I didn't believe was there, and Michael Collins 100% cemented my belief that this animal is still out there. Yeah. My final answer as well, because uh, it is so, well, the size of it is so much bigger. But the fact that you said that they were rare to begin with, I mean. And elusive, you know, like very, yeah. very shy and skittish, not just yeah. limited in numbers. Yeah. I think one of these things could be around because, you know, I'm an expert. I like that. And who doesn't like believing in something? It's fucking hope. You know what I mean? Like, just, yeah. like it doesn't hurt you to believe it's still there. I'm not saying believe woolly mammoths are still there because that's silliness. <laughs> but, you know, to hold out some hope for a super dope giant woodpecker, why not? You know, why yeah, not? Why not? 